Good day, folks. Welcome back to my neck of the woods. My name is Dika. I want to share my experience and my knowledge, hoping to lessen your learning curve. So today I have another product review, a broadhead review. Uh, broadhead made by Ten Point, which is a crossbow manufacturer. I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to tell you some specs. I'm going to tell you my experience with it. And um, you can decide whether it is a fit for you. All right. Before I get started, please sub the channel, like my videos, and make some comments. You know that I love the comments. I always talk about comments. If people leave me feedback, that allows me to do better reviews and give people what they want and let the consumer know, you know how products are working for me and then maybe you can make better decisions and lessen your learning curve out in the field, okay? All right, so this is a mechanical broadhead. This is a rear deploying, a rear, try not to cut myself here. This is a rear deploying broadhead made by 10 Point. It is called the Evo X Center Punch. It is designed for crossbow shooting. I shoot a crossbow and I shoot a 10 point crossbow. And <clears throat> these came with my crossbow as part of the package that I bought. This is a spectacular broadhead. It really is. I really like this design. I mean, I know there are many, like Rage is a rear deploying and uh, uh, the NAP Kill Zone is a rear deploying. There's many other ones. But I think this one is just a little bit special and I'm gonna tell you about it, okay? So I'm gonna start with some specs. Uh, first off, it is $45 on the website uh, for a three pack. There's no, there's no replacement blades as far as I can see, but I'm gonna tell you about that. And um, there's no practice head. They fly like field points, so um, I don't even know if you need a practice head. And the blades are so sharp that you're almost afraid to touch them, which is, which is an amazing thing for a broadhead, especially right out of the box. Right, so this is 100 grain. Uh, the ferrule is T6775 aluminum, which is hard aluminum in the aluminum world, so to speak, but it's not steel by any means. The tip is a hardened steel. It's kind of like a, kind of like a chisel tip. It's more just like a, like a, like a sharp point for the most part. Uh, the blades are 440 stainless and they are 0 0.30 thickness which seems to be kind of a standard across the board for like mechanical broadheads. I think Rage and Killzone, I, I, I think they're all roughly the same, same 440 steel and uh, the thickness is the same. But this broadhead's just a little bit different than both of those. And in my opinion, I haven't, I've, I've shot the Killzone before, I have not shot a Rage. Um, I think it's better, in my opinion. So uh, it has a, uh, like I said, it's rear deploying. There's no collars. I just cut myself. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I th uh, there's no collars on it, and um, it measures um, in its open position, which is not this. It's more. Uh, it's more this, and they measure one and seven eighths. All right, which is basically two inches for the most part. I will close it. There's a tiny little notch right on the back side of the blade that holds it in place. Now this is um, uh, gauged or rated for up to 500 feet per section. For, for 500, pe 500 feet per second. I think you could shoot this out of a regular compound. I really do. Um, I know it's geared for a crossbow. I shoot a 10 point Viper 430, which shoots, f shoots this 430 feet per second. Um, these blades stay in there under that, um, that speed for no problems whatsoever. Um, as you see, like I said, there's no collars, um, and when it goes into an animal, right, as long, I'm going to try very hard not to cut myself. So as long as there's pressure, oh, pressure on this part right here, that broadhead, that, those blades are going to stay open going through that animal, as opposed to some other rear deploying broadheads. Now the, the kill zone kind of locks. It kind of has this sliding area and then it locks and then it pivots very similar to this same design. The Rage, um, I don't think the Rage pivots. It, it might, to be honest, don't quote me. I don't know a lot about it, but I know that the Rage is sometimes they continue to close up in the animal if, if, the, if certain pressure isn't kept. And this one, it, as long as pressure is kept there for the most part, Obviously, everything comes down to shot placement. Uh, mechanicals do, across the board, have trouble with quartering, uh, quartering shots, but I th this one's pretty good. Um, I did a quartering. I've shot two deer with this exact same broadhead. Um, one was double lung. The blood trail was absurd. Um, 
for the most part, it was graphic. And then I have a video at the end of this video of, of, of a one lung um, blood trail, which is also absurd. Um, the, the amount of blood that came out of the animal was silly, absolutely silly, right? Um, like I said, my experience has been good with these. Uh, their claim to fame, uh, well, not claim to fame, why they kind of market this is it's uh, downrange or long range accuracy. I would agree with that 100%. In fact, I think everything that they say that it is, it is. Um, it's a great broadhead, it has field point accuracy. I was stacking arrows at 80 yards. In fact, I ruined an arrow and I ruined a broadhead because I was shooting groups. So I stopped doing that. Uh, granted, I had a crossbow. I, I, I don't think I could ever get that range with, a, um, with my compound bow. 50 yards, absolutely, but not 80. Um, the design on impact, I'm going to show you just a little bit here. I have a piece of cardboard. And I'm going to try to demonstrate this for you to give you an idea of what happens when it hits an animal. I'm going to go slow here. So I, I kind of poked a hole in here so I don't have to like put that pressure here. So when it goes into the animal, right, it really has no option but to open right like that. And the, now granted, this has been used on two animals, but even the new ones, they open that easy. But for some reason, they stay closed during flight, which is well, it's just a spectacular design. So one thing that this does, so if it decides to kick while it's inside, see how the blades kind of stay in the same area for the most part, and then the, the ferrule can pivot independently. But these will stay open as long as there's pressure right there. So say, say this comes in, right? And then say the scapula, say the scapula is like right here, right? So it comes in like that and right there. What's probably gonna happen is the blades are gonna stay open together and it's gonna pivot as opposed to sticking into it and getting stuck or stopped. I mean, my crossbow, I don't think it's gonna happen, but even if you shot with a compound bow, Sometimes that happen, and, I, and I'm, I'm really liking some of these broadheads. On, like uh, I did a review on um, the NAP DK4. And that is a big fixed blade up in front, but that also has that same thing where it kind of locks in place and pivots at the same time so it can continue its trajectory, which is a great option. There's more and more like the sever. The sever does that. Um, the kill zone has always done that, but th there's other ones with these big cut mechanicals that are that design seems to be working for a lot of people. A lot of people are having success with a similar design to this. All right, I'm going to talk about the blades for just a little bit. They are so sharp. Out of the box, they're, they're crazy sharp. They're silly. You, you can't, you're almost afraid to touch them because you're going to cut yourself. They're razor, razor sharp. This has gone through, uh, after it went through the first year, I didn't need to sharpen it again. And it stuck into the ground afterwards. I just cleaned it off, ran it under the uh, faucet, and then I used it on another deer. And at the end of this video, you'll see the blood trail on that deer. Keep in mind, it's only one lung. One lung. I didn't double lung that deer um, for that blood trail. Um, obviously, sharp placement is everything, of course. You know, everything's up to sharp placement. But if you hit the deer right, you're, you're going to get a crazy blood trail. And I attribute that to the sharpness of the blades. I think it just slices through everything so quick and so crisp that it has no choice but to just bleed abruptly. Massive, massive hemorrhage. It's crazy. Some of the, some of the best blood trails I have ever seen in my life um, come from these, this broadhead, which I like. It's just two blades, but it's very, very simple. All right? So, the Evo X Center Punch Broadhead by 10 Point. Sub the channel. Check out this broadhead. It's a good broadhead. I'll talk to you guys later. Be well.